Alright, just wanted to make a video to show where I'm at. Uh, okay, this is a basically a motor style magneto. And uh, what that does, it's like a magneto on your lawnmower. Uh, as the motor is turning, it, it uh, charges the condenser and then discharges to the plug so they can sell you gas. What this is, is a motor magneto and it's an open loop circuit. And the difference is, um, this is just a regular little motor and when you put, uh, hook up a battery to it and you put a load on it, it fights to try to stay running by taking more energy. That's a closed loop circuit. This is an open loop circuit. If you put a drag on it uh, to slow it down by you know, putting a load on it, it'll draw less energy. Uh, and then you'll have to turn the page back, yeah, I don't know, 1930, 1940, when they used the uh, hit and miss motor um, and used the energy from uh, a big flywheel. And then it took just very little energy to keep that flywheel going. And that's what this would be really good for. Um, but what I'm doing right now, uh, I got two capacitors, or 10 volt capacitors, and uh, these capacitors, I have, uh, I don't know, 80 or 90 volts worth of 9 volt batteries put together, but they're all dead. They're, there's all, just about no current in it uh, when I leave them on for a while. It'll charge for a little while when I shut it off and then turn it back on, but then it slows down and stops. So this is the this is the voltage of this capacitor, and I believe it's off right now. No, it was on. Okay. So right now there's no current in these batteries to push the voltage into the capacitor. So that's what I use these batteries here for. I just use a little bit of I just tap them to get the current to pump that up. I'll do that now so you can see. Watch this meter here. I'll just tap it. If I hold it on there, the batteries get hot. It, it, it runs it up way too fast. So I just tap it. And then the batteries just stay cold. So I'll tap it up to about 14 volts. And they're not new batteries, but they still have some current in them. So. Okay, so now what, I've, what I'm doing is I'm going to start this up. I'm only running one coil now. I did have another one here, that's why there was a circuit there. But this coil has two windings. It has a small winding, it has a trigger winding to for the motor portion of it to, to make it go. And then a bigger winding right next to it. Uh, that every time this triggers to pulse the motor portion around, it also pulses the energy that's around the big wire into this capacitor. And that's what this circuit does. So all I needed was a way to dump the energy from this capacitor when this one here got down way low. Because uh, as this one's going down to run the system, this one's coming up because it's being charged by the second wire. Uh, I just needed a way to dump this one into this one. And that's where this switch comes in. And what I needed it to do was to disconnect. This is the primary. I needed to disconnect the primary and then the charge battery. So the, air, the whole circuit was disconnected, and then I needed it to connect the charge battery to the primary, so that just as long as the charge battery was more, it would uh, charge the primary battery until they were even. And, uh, and then reconnect the charge battery, then the primary battery, and then the whole circuit would be live again. And I needed to do that pretty quick so it didn't lose any RPM. So that's what I made here, that's what this does. Uh, you can see right now it's, it's set up, everything's connected. And when I turn it, it disconnects everything. I turn it a little bit more and see it dump this one into that one until they're even. And then it disconnects everything and then connects everything back up again. So that's the only way I can think of right now to, to be able to do this manually. You can buy a circuit that will automatically do this. Uh, dump a capacitor into a battery to keep a battery uh, to help ch force charge a battery. Uh, that's what this circuit basically does. But I'm trying to figure out a way to get it to run on its own because uh, I know it's been done. I've seen it. Uh, just trying to figure out how they did it. 
Um, the energy coming off of this coil, since it's just one wire for trigger, one wire to pulse into the charge battery, or the secondary uh, capacitor, the rate is not even. It'll take more energy faster than it puts energy in here. But I've uh, heard that if you take a coil, and instead of just one wire for each, if you have one wire for trigger, just like this one, but then have six or seven wires as pickup, and have six or seven circuits per wire, or, you know, you have seven wires, you'd have seven separate circuits, that you would uh, actually dump more energy, or at least closer to dumping the same as it's taking. So that's my next step. But just to show you where I'm at, I'll go ahead and bump these batteries up again just a little bit. So it's about 14 volts. So it'll run for a minute. Okay, and then start it up. All I gotta do is spin it and the circuit turns on. So you can see it's drawing 60 milliamps right now and it'll draw, keep drawing more uh, the faster the wheel starts. No, the faster the wheel goes, the more it draws. <clears throat> and as you can see, this is coming down and this is going up. And the rate's not quite as uh, fast coming up as it is going down, but it's it's not real far. I mean, just as long as it's it's pulsing like right, 120 milliamps right now, the more milliamps it pulses, the more energy it pulses off of this coil. Um, of course, then the more energy it takes from the primary capacitor. But uh, as you can see, it's coming up nicely. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll let this here come down until uh, the milliamp draw is around 30, 40 milliamps, and then I'll click this switch over and dump the energy from this capacitor into this capacitor. And it's 40 milliamps. I'll go ahead and dump it. It's down to two, almost two volts. See, now it evened out. It's back up to 80 milliamps. So, the theory, as far as I'm concerned, is extremely sound. I know it's been done. Uh, there's probably hundreds of different ways of doing it to gather the energy from the atmosphere to uh, build a motor that will run under the energy it generates. Uh, this would just be one way. Of course, it's still a work in progress. It's down to 30 milliamps, so I'll click it over. Back up to 80 milliamps. So it's actually reclaiming the energy that's coming off the coil, the energy that's normally shorted out on a regular electric motor. And it's usually wasted energy because uh, they figure it has no current because the energy from the environment has no current. But when you run that energy uh, into a capacitor, it's got instantaneous current. <clears throat> and since it's being pulsed, uh, I'll click it over again. Since it's being pulsed, uh, the harder it, it this pulses to make the motor run, the harder it pulses the other energy into the charge side. Uh, so that that in itself gives it a, a kind of a, a current. You know, it's pulsing it. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, all this the energy from this is doing is just running the motor portion. It has nothing to do with the energy coming off of the charge side of this into this, except for the pulse. And I think it has to do with the magnetic flux, because uh, you get a magnetic field every time it pulses and it pushes uh, the energy around the second wire along with it. So just let it shut down. I'll go ahead and charge this one back up. It doesn't take much very little current to charge a capacitor. So my next step is to, um, I got a, a big board, uh, test board, and I got the components. I just need to put it together, hook this up, and uh, hopefully get more energy uh, out than in or at least the same.
And that's what I'm hoping. And if I reach that point, then I'm all good. Then I know that if I buy that circuit, it's a little pricey, but if I buy that circuit or make one, I know there's a mechanical way to do it. If I can put this switch, if I had a big enough motor, big enough shaft, and hook, make a switch similar to this and put it on the shaft so it would constantly, constantly keep these, you know, connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected constantly uh, fast enough it wouldn't uh, take away from the pulsing that much uh, then the energy would stay up it would just keep running so that's where I'm at right now I just wanted to uh, run it down just wanted to make a video to document it be, uh, so that I can compare my numbers um, input versus output with the numbers I get with the uh, second coil when I get it put together. Okay. Yeah, it's humming pretty good. Yeah. I'm going to take this off of here. Oh, that was easy. Okay, so you can see it's humming pretty good. Three milliamps, nine volts, two volts. I'll click the switch over. Six. Ninety milliamps. So it works. I could take and dump the energy from the charge side back into the primary. I just need a system that does it fast enough. And first I need to generate as, at least as much energy coming off of this coil as going in it. Which uh, I know that's one way to do it. So. Alright, well thanks for watching. And uh, click it over one more time. Thanks.